Right, so uh, today what we're going to be doing is creating an export plugin and then creating a bizarre package from that plugin. So, what's an export plugin? If you look at a list of items in a repository, or if you look at an item in a repository, you'll have an, uh, a number of options to export this as, as in various metadata formats. Um, for example, uh, BibTech or, um, or, or XML or JSON. We're going to create a new export plugin and we're going to base it on the very, very simple ASCII citation exporter, which simply uh, exports the citation of the item as ASCII. So I have a, uh, a shell open on the server. And what we're going to do is we're going to dig into the Perlib directory, which is where the core Perl libraries are installed. Go in the plugin directory in the eprints directory and into the export plugin. It's where all of the uh, all of the exporters live. The one we just used, the ASCII citation, is text.pm. And if you have a look inside, you can see that it has um, it has a name, which is ASCII citation. It has a, a list of things it accepts, so it will accept a single ePrint, or it will accept a list of ePrints, and it's visible to everyone. It has this function output data obj. This is a standard function for export plugins, and all it does is it returns what needs to be exported, which is uh, a conversion of a DOM object into a piece of text, so it will be returning a piece of text. So this is about the shape of the kind of export we want. So we will copy to, uh, we're going to call this hello.pm. So this plugin is going to do nothing complicated. All it's going to do is, I'll call this hello. It will take an, an ePrint or a list of ePrints, visible to everyone. And all it's going to do is return So I'm running screen, so I've got a screen session as root as well. So I'll restart the web server. And if we look now in our list of export plugins, uh, we need to refresh this page. You'll see that we now have hello. If we export this item as hello, we get this text hello. Um, you could be doing some processing and exporting. Yeah, it's, it's an export plugin. Um, it takes an item, ignores what it is, and prints the word hello. It's not useful. So we have our export plugin, it's working. We need to turn this into a bizarre package. Now, the first thing we need to do is get it out of the, so this is the ePrints root we're in. And inside there, we've got the core ePrints Perl libraries. And we don't want it in the core ePrints Perl libraries. Uh, that's where ePrints, uh, the release of ePrints lives. We don't want to modify that unless it's absolutely necessary. Instead, we'll be putting this in the lib directory. Now, sometimes there isn't a plugins directory in lib, but we can just create it. Plugins, and then inside plugins, we're gonna create the export directory. And then we're going to move with the file we just created. To here. Uh, oops, not to here, to the plugin directory. And we can confirm that that works by restarting the web server again and checking that that is still visible here. 
There it is, and it still works. Now, the, the, the lib plugin is also loaded and is available to all um, to all repositories that are installed on this installation of ePrints. So the best practice is to have anything in lib be disabled by default. So I'm going to do that by adding a property at the top here. The property is called disable, and we'll set it to one. And now, if we restart the web server, and try and do this, it's not found. That plugin just gone. And we can see that it is not visible in this list either. Hello has gone. So what we need to do is have this turned on at the local level. And the way we do that is in the archive configuration directory, in the config.d directory. I'm going to create a file called, or oh, before we do that, let's have a look at plugins.pl. Now, plugins.pl is uh, the configuration file by default for plugins, and it it's worth having a look because it will show you um, it will show you how to turn things on and off, how to move things around in, in in the order they're in, how to modify any of the properties of a plugin. And this is the property we want to to modify on our plugin. Um, and so what we'll do is rather than edit the plugins.pl file, we're going to create a a local configuration file for this bizarre package, and we're going to call this send the score hello.pl and what we'll do is copy that line of code across and modify it. So we're going to set disabled to zero to say this is not disabled. So to test that, we'll restart the web server again. And you can see now that, oh, it's not there. I know why. Because that's not the name of our plugin. The name of our plugin is hello. I should have said copy and modify, not copy. So now we have our hello export plugin and it is working I hope it's running slowly can't be there not working the network just must be going a little slow right uh oh it looks like my internet has decided to pack up I'm actually at home doing this because I needed some quiet. Aha. Aha, we're back. Okay, let's try again. There we go. So it's still there, it's still working, and we don't need to connect again. So, uh, sorry, I've lost where we were. Right, so we've we've created our plugin, we've moved it to the lib directory, we've created a local configuration file, and it's all working, and now we have to create our bazaar package. Now this is done through the uh, through the ePrints bazaar tool in the ePrints front end. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new EPM called Hello Test. So this is a system ID. So uh, the usual kind of rules apply, uh, alphanumeric or underscores or dashes. Um, so I've created my, my bizarre package. We'll give it some metadata. 
title is hello test. And we'll give it a version number. Now the version number is actually quite important. E prints, uh, the, the, the bazaar when you upload it will know whether it's a new version or not based on ch this number changing. So you have to constantly uh, by hand increment this number. And then we have to choose which files go in this. So we've got in the lib directory, we've got this plugin. This, the root of this files is the lib directory in ePrint. So if we look here, we've got config.d citations, default citation EPM. And if we look here, so we're in the ePrint root now. If we go into lib, we have that same list config.d citations, default config, um, EPM, this is not a directory, lang plugins, EPM lang plugins. It's, it, this is where this is looking for these files. Now, we can create this for this, um, uh, for this plugin, but we've got a local configuration file. Now, any local configuration files have to go in the EPM's local configuration. So this in lib EPM, we have space to put this. So let's move that. Um, where are we now? Yes. So what we'll do is we'll move training one. We'll move the Z hello. Uh, .pl file into EPM uh, hello there. And that's where that needs to be and then we will come back edit this again and you can see this is unrolled wherever we have something and we will add the test config config.d said hello.pl and we'll save and return that. So now we've created it, we need to test it. So I have another training repository here, training three. I'm logged in on that. And if we have a look at our manage deposit screen, if we have a look at our manage deposit screen, are we going slowly again? Um, we can see that we can export and there is no hello here. It goes straight from grid to HTML. So what we'll do to test this, and it's always a good idea to do a test install, is we'll download this EPM and we can upload it to the bazaar on, on, on this repository. So we go to the bazaar page again and we go to the available tab. Now right at the bottom of the list, the list is loaded from the ePrints bazaar server but right at the bottom of this list we have this file uploader uh, downloads and we've got this and we'll install it so we've installed that and it's there now oh, this one has also the green spring theme installed I thought it would be uh, good to be able to easily visually distinguish between these two repositories, the one we're developing on and the one we're testing on. So manage deposits. Just to get an item again. And if we uh, go to actions, have a look at exporters, we now have this hello functionality in there. That's our bizarre package done. So it's always a good idea to also create an icon for this. Uh, now, to create an icon, we need to use a bazaar package that's uh, installable in ePrints, uh, which is the ePrints Icon Builder. There it is, ePrints Icon uh, Bazaar Icon Builder. We'll install that, and then we can use that to generate our icon. So, Icon Builder, that's installed and is now available here. And all we need to do is choose a picture that we created for this. So I have one here, and I shall upload it. It's a little bit big, so it'll take a second. So 
slow internet. Uh, so this this would be perhaps an icon you've created, um, and you can choose what color background you want for it. So we'll make it a nice lurid green, and then you export that, and that gets downloaded. And if we have a look at that, this is what it looks like. This is this was uh, Helsinki last year at Open Repositories. So then what do you do with that icon? Well, you have to get it onto your server. So, um, icon.com to mistake I make a lot. The joys of fast internet. So, and the place that that goes is in lib Static images. And it is called uh, I, you know what? I can't remember what it needs to be called. I shall install another bizarre package to find out. So if we install something simple, like uh, like the Wordle generator, we'll see what happens. That's installed. And we can, if we go to developer tools and edit this, we can see which files are attached and it is Ah, static images EPM. So we can see we've got the names of the plugins to identify which which PNG applies to which item. So we'll SCP Copy the file to here to so we've SCP that file onto the server, and if we go back, edit this, edit the hello test file, we can then tell it. Static images epm hello ping save and return that and we now have the icon that we've created. So to publish this to get it onto the bazaar, you need an account which can be created uh, on on ePrint Services LDAP server. Publish this, and this will push it out to the ePrints Bazaar. And we can see if we go to bazaar.eprints.org, we now have the Hello Test package installed here. It says who's deposited it. Um, it's got a URI, it's got a list of files, and some. Now, supposing we wanted to create a new version of this. We just modify, update, republish. And that's it. Thank you for watching.